What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul and I do videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I've been in Japan for about 18 years. Today I'm going to do kind of a fun to serious topic which is things that you think you recognize when you come to Japan that turn out to be wrong or completely different. I'll begin with some kind of fun frivolous examples and get a little more serious towards the end of the video. But before I get started, I want to invite you to check out my podcast. I have just dropped my third episode of the Journal of Japan Journeys podcast. You can find it on pretty much every major podcast platform. And while this YouTube channel is me talking about my life and experience in Japan, that podcast is actually me interviewing other long-term residents about their story and why they are in Japan and why they've stayed in Japan for so long. The most recent episode is Dr. Kola Oloboyega, who is originally from Nigeria, and he got his graduate degrees in the UK and then eventually wound up in Japan where he has been also for 18 years, like myself. So if you're interested in that kind of journey of a man from Nigeria to becoming a tenured professor at a Japanese university, uh, please check out the Journal of Japan Journeys podcast, and I'll put a link below in the description too. Okay, now for today's topic, things that you might think you recognize or understand when you come to Japan that turn out to be completely wrong or different. The first example is simple. I went into a convenience store one day and decided I wanted to drink some tomato juice. I don't often drink tomato juice, but I was in the mood for some then. I went back to the drinks case, checked the various labels and decided on one, went up to the counter, paid for it, went outside, opened it up, took a sip. What is this? Was my first reaction. You see, for someone coming from America where tomato juice is always salty, we're talking like V8 or what you put into your Bloody Mary, tomato juice is salty, it's supposed to be salty. But this was a fruits tomato drink and it was sweet and I had no idea it was gonna be coming out sweet. When you're expecting salty and you get sweet instead, it kind of puts you off. So those kinds of mistakes with labeling can often happen. You might think that this would be something that wouldn't happen at chain stores. Like, if you go anywhere in the world, you probably expect McDonald's hamburgers to taste exactly the same. And for the most part, they will. There might be some different menu items, like local menu items that you can't get in your home country. But for the most part, you expect things are going to be exactly the same. That's not always the case. If you come to Japan from America, for example, and you order a green tea frappuccino or matcha frappuccino from Starbucks, it's going to taste completely different. My wife and I discovered this going the other way. We went to the US and thought, oh, they have green tea frappuccinos here too. Let's get one. Ordered them and found them to be completely disgusting. So what's the difference? Well, in America, not surprisingly, it's gotta be sweeter. So they had this pump of sweet syrup added and they probably used about half of the green tea powder that they use in Japan. So if you're in America and you're watching this and you want to order a green tea or matcha frappuccino exactly how they make it in Japan, just say no syrup and double the green tea powder. Okay, this difference in how companies might make something can even go farther than that where companies can have a completely different image in a foreign country. For example, Kokoichi, the curry place. In, in Japan, it's like fast food, cheap. It's not special, like you wouldn't take someone there on a date. But in some foreign countries where they have exported their brand, it's seen as more high-end and fancy. An example from America where this happened is when I lived in the States, and we're talking, you know, 2002 before I used to shop at Banana Republic sometimes it's a little bit nicer than the Gap or something like that and might buy a sweater or something for 50 60 dollars probably on sale for 30 40 and when I came to Japan I discovered oh they have Banana Republic stores here too 
There's one in the Landmark Tower uh, in the shopping mall, Landmark Tower in Yokohama. And when I went in, I thought it would be like the American version, but here it's kind of more of a high-end boutique, like trying to get a higher priced liking clientele and everything was like, 15,000 yen or more, so $150 or more for that same sweater. So I was a little bit surprised about that. Ended up definitely not buying anything at those prices. So these examples are all pretty mundane. Let's get into examples that might be a little bit more serious. First off, on the topic of clothes, do not trust size labels. Now, it's probably pretty obvious that a Japanese large and a Japanese extra large is not going to be the same as an American large or extra large. But if you think you know your measurements and buy clothes in Japan just off that, you might end up making a pretty big error. You see, I can't tell you how many times I've found a pair of jeans or trousers where the waist is correct and the length is correct because I know my measurements. But upon trying them on, there was no way my legs were getting into those trousers or those jeans or simply my butt was too big. Like I don't have thin legs. I have, you know, good German stock uh, kind of body type. So yeah, have to be careful. Don't trust that even the measurements written on the tag of the pants will be correct. Same with shirts. I mean, the shirt might be an XL or an L, what I think I should be able to wear, but it just doesn't stretch across my shoulders. Jackets can be the same way. So my advice is always try things on. Don't trust size or measurement labels. The next one, the next example is really something I still have to consciously think about. Like, I've been here for so long, but I still don't have this subconsciously ingrained in my mind. And that is color coding of on and off and correct and incorrect is just opposite in my mind. What do I mean by this? Well, a lot of school and larger buildings will have like light panels or like you know, panels to turn on, the media systems, etc. And in Japan, red, a little red LED indication means on, and green means off. To me, that's completely opposite in my mind. So when I'm looking at the light panel in a classroom at school, for example, I still have to stop and think about it and be like, okay, okay, those red ones are on. I need to hit the green ones <laughs> to get the rest of the lights on. It's just not natural for me at all. The other one, oh, and I should say that it's the same in my house. I have light switches in my house that have a little LED so you can find them in the dark. Um, and it's green in the dark because green is off and it'll turn to red when I turn it on. I don't know, I still have to think about that if I'm, wait, is, is this light to the outside on or off? Oh yeah, okay, it's green, I gotta, yeah. <laughs> the other red and green switch is if something is correct or wrong. If you watch a variety show, like a quiz show on Japanese TV, they'll highlight the correct answers in red and the wrong answers in green. For example, I used to watch this variety show called Neprig, which is basically like these comedians have special guests of actors and other talent on their show, and they play these games, and one of the games was where they would stand in a row and they would have to write the answer collectively to some question. They'd have to write out the name of a person or the name of something. And if anyone in the row got their part wrong, then they would get no points. Anyone watching this who doesn't speak Japanese would maybe assume that the person who got the red parts highlighted, oh, they were the ones that got it wrong. But actually, the parts that would be highlighted in green or maybe blue, those were the incorrect portions of the answer. So red, highlighted red, means correct, and highlighted green means 
wrong. And to me, that is absolutely opposite. Like, red is when something's incorrect and green is when it's fine. So I still have to consciously think about that one. The final example I'm going to give you is the most serious one. And that is, don't assume you know what you're doing when you go to a gasoline stand or gas station in Japan, especially as an American. And this might be true if you're coming from another foreign country as well. I have an acquaintance that I knew back when I first came to Japan. Uh, he was new to Japan, just like I was. And he was working for a board of education in, that was basically in charge of a numerous small towns. And so he had to travel from school to school for his job and his board of education provided him with a car. The first time he went to a gas stand or gas station to fill up his vehicle, he couldn't read any Japanese and just assumed that if he chose the cheapest option, it would be the same as in the US because in the US, regular unleaded is the cheapest high octane premium gasoline is more expensive than that and then diesel is the most expensive and this has to do with how fuel is taxed in the states but in japan it's not like that premium unleaded is the most expensive followed by regular as being cheaper but then diesel is the cheapest so you know what he did he filled up his car with diesel wrecked the engine and that was that he should have talked to someone or asked but he just assumed well the cheapest gas is always unleaded so that's it got to be careful in instances like that and if you come here as a tourist and rent a car or if you plan to live here don't make that mistake actually gasoline stands here um, color coordinate their the nozzles and basically red is unleaded yellow or gold is premium and green is diesel so that's pretty much standard across the country that's one way to tell or remember but don't just assume that you can choose what is what by price all right that's all for today if you live here or you've been here and you've had experiences like this yourself please share in the comments other things that you thought you knew what you were looking at but it turned out to be completely different. I'd love to hear other examples from your experience. And if you did enjoy this content, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't. We're growing. I mean, this purpose of this channel isn't for me to be some kind of big YouTuber, but it is fun to see that people are actually enjoying my videos and subscribing to get more. So at any rate, thank you very much for watching this particular video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.